Thunder Bay. <laughs> Chef Mike Stigler is here with a dish from their dinner menu that's seasonal, it's light, it's delicious. But first, Mike wants to talk about summer camp yeah. and his first love. His experience. My camp experiences consist of deer camp and, oh. and boot camp. Oh. There is no kissing involved in either one, though, I can assure you. Strictly platonic. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. Um, swordfish is something I can honestly say I've never made at home. I've had it out, and it's been delicious. Never made it at home. Really? Well, after yeah. you see how simple it is to put together today, maybe that'll change. It's a really okay. delicious fish. It's quite a uh, piece of meat. I mean, it's much, you know, if you think about fillets of fish, you think of them as being very dainty and, yeah. and thin, but mm -hmm. this is a much meatier piece of well, fish. Well, when you're dealing with swordfish, you're talking about a steak. You're talking about a swordfish steak, not a fillet. Because um, a fillet actually is a reference to the entire side of a fish being cut down the length of its backbone. Okay. And you turn that over and skin it out, and then you get a fillet. Now, when we're talking about a swordfish, you're talking about more of a, more of a steak. Now, you can see the way the skin is on the swordfish right mm -hmm. here. Um, this would sit up upright like this right here, and then the, the fish would run the length of it. So okay. rather than being a fillet, this is cut down. Um, straight up and down along the length of the fish. That's a big okay. fish. So that is a big fish. That's so yeah. Cool. So in order to get this guy in the pan, what we're going to do first is this is a boneless steak. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do though is we're going to remove the skin. Now with swordfish, if you wanted to, what you could do is cook it with the skin right on there, and then it'll peel off rather easily um, after you cook it on there. But you don't really gain anything from cooking it with the skin on. So we're going to go ahead and remove the skin from the fish. Okay. So it, it's it's a real thin layer. With salmon, there's a really large amount of fat that's right between the skin and the flesh and the, frequently with salmon you'll want to leave that on there because you'll get a lot of flavor there. Mm. As you can see a swordfish is a lot leaner and there's not a lot of fat yeah, in there. So you're not, like little. I said, yeah. you're not really gaining anything. Okay. So you just get a really sharp little knife, um, run it right along the length like that okay. and you can peel that skin right off and then you're good to go and you have a completely um, boneless, skinless piece of fish that's, that's ready to hit the grill. And a nice, right. another nice thing about swordfish is that because it's a steak and not a Super flaky fillet. Um, it'll handle. It'll be able to stand up to the grilling a lot better. You know what I mean? You can mm -hmm. treat it more like a piece of meat rather than like a dainty little piece of fish. Yeah. So to get, get this guy ready for the grill pan, mm -hmm. we're gonna put a little bit of uh, olive oil on that. Um, rub it around, and then we're gonna put a little bit on the other side. And part of the putting the olive oil on there is two reasons. One, it's gonna help our seasoning to add here to it. And this is just a mix of salt and black pepper okay. with just a tiny little bit of garlic pepper in there. Is it a flavorful fish on its own? It is. It, it, it's, it has, you know, I hate to keep referencing meat, but it kind of has sort of a meaty type of thing going okay. on with it. You know, it's sort of like portobello is the, the meat of the vegetable yeah, world, yeah. you know. Well, swordfish is kind of like the meat okay. of, the, uh, of the fish world. So we've got our swordfish right there. It's all seasoned up. It's ready to go. And then we're going to go ahead and put this onto our grill pan over here. Mm -hmm. um, you can see I got that nice and hot. And yeah. I already got this one going over here. Let's have a little look at it and see how it's going. You can mm -hmm. see we got those beautiful grill marks going on there already. We're going to go ahead and flip that guy over and oh, you can see how nice that looks. Now swordfish um, will dry out if you overcook it. So the thing oh, you want to make sure of is that you don't overcook your swordfish. I okay. mean, uh, granted, you know, that kind of is going to apply to anything. You don't want to overcook but anything. you're not just searing it. You're really cooking yeah, it. Yeah, you're actually going to cook it all the way through. It's not like tuna where you necessarily want to serve it. Uh, medium rare, you want to go ahead and cook that all the way through. Okay. So then, in addition to that, we've got some nice roasted vegetables going on over here in the pan. And you can see we've got green zucchini squash, yellow zucchini squash, red onion. Um, we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper into that too. Ooh, and I smell that garlic Yum. you put in there. Those roast up for a real quick minute and, you know, and we'll be almost ready to plate. And of when you put the, the, the garlic mixture in there because a lot of times I put it in the pan with the oil and I've heard that's. How, Often, how you burn it, and yeah. it doesn't taste as good. Exactly. So it's better to add it later after your food is more cooked. Yeah, especially when you're cooking on high heat like we are today, because mm -hmm. we're trying to cook this. If you were to cook this type of a zucchini squash like this on low heat, it's going to get all mushy, you know. So you cook okay. it on high heat, and you get to get a little sear on the outside, and it's going to be nice and moist and tender on the inside. And like you mentioned, you put the garlic in towards the end so that it doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. If it was more of a, um, a low heat type application, you could go ahead and do that. Um, and add the garlic in a little bit earlier because it's not going to be so much at a risk of burning. It's Let's bright and colorful. Isn't it? It is beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about your Father's Day brunch because Father's Day is coming up Sunday, June mm -hmm. 19th from 10 until 3. You're yeah. going to have a, a buffet fit for a king. Get it for dad. Uh -huh. uh, but you got a lot of great um, dad friendly items. So there's obviously a lot of meat barbecue ribs, jerk chicken, steak stew. 
steak and cheese scrambled eggs. Yep. Even get a free beer. Steak. Free beer for dad. You betcha. So yeah, I mean we, you know, Mother's Day we put out a lot of things that are mothers friendly. Dad's Day we do the same thing. We try to cater to the event to the people that we're making mm -hmm. it for. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a delicious um, brunch. So come on out and visit us and call ahead and make reservations so we can make sure to make enough food awesome. for everybody. Okay. Should I taste the fish? You, you should. But oh, well, let me finish yet. it just no. yet. Okay. We have some delicious roasted pineapple and papaya salsa that we're going to put on there to add mm. a little bit of citrusy type of a punch on there. Okay. Um, give it some color and add another layer of flavor to it and make it just even a little bit more healthful than than what it already is. Okay. So delicious. that's a delicious grilled swordfish out at uh, Thunder Bay Grill. Um, okay. And we also offer snapper, tuna, um, salmon, a bunch of other different kinds of mm. fish as well. And um, yeah, we have that on our dinner mm. menu. So come on out and give it a try. But that mango salsa, it is delicious. Yeah, that mango papaya salsa gives it just a punch that it needs. And it's probably a healthy type of fish, too, mm -hmm. right? Extremely, yeah. Extremely healthy because mm -hmm. it's grilled and there's no added fats to it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's clean and all that good stuff. All right, here's the information. Starting with Father's Day brunch. Treat Dad. He'll get a free glass of Miller Lite. Um, every dad who comes in for Father's Day brunch, it's Sunday, June 19th. Make reservations now, though, because they get super busy, just like on Mother's Day and Easter and holidays. You can call them at 262-523-4244. They're located right off of Interstate 94 and Highway 164 in Pewaukee. That's exit 294, thunderbaygrill.com. Um, wonderful opportunity. And this is on the dinner menu. Yes, ma'am. Right? Dinner menu. Swordfish steak. There you go. Thanks, Great Mike. Great to see you, Mike. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.